we were getting into this uh, story. So Daniel was asking about this story about I had this crazy circumstance. And, and the reason why is because Sean rolls, uh, rolls on his farm just like this. It's one of the realities of being out here an hour away, an hour and a half away from civilization. So don't be alarmed because uh, we're gonna we're all learning. You know what I'm saying? Who who this young man is? Yeah. So basically, what he's trying to say is just because I got my gun on me doesn't mean I'm a crazy dope grower out in the mountains just trying to shoot people. Like I'm all about gun safety. I'm a volunteer firefighter locally here and first responder. So if people get hurt, I go help them. And uh, the only time I've ever used my gun on a person was to protect innocent people that were getting uh, attacked by a psychotic man out on our local beach. I was going to like check out a spot to go with my family and have my birthday party at and see if our RV could fit there to like invite friends down and have a bonfire. And um, my family was coming in from being gone from me for the first time, my like two year old son and, and uh, fiance and just scoping out the campsite real quick and this, this dude. This dude was rolling through the campground and he rolled right by my truck and, and looked over at me and my dog driving by and said, I'll kill you, I'll kill that dog, I'll kill everybody here. And we're talking about um, a public campground on the Lost Coast, an hour from any, any law enforcement. So I heard this dude say that and I was like, wow, that's interesting that he just said that to me. So I circled around and even though I was in a hurry to get to my family, I stopped and was like, okay, I gotta see what's going on. I had my, my gun with me in a safe lock box and I, I popped it out and I was talking to this other camper who just talked to the guy and I was like, what just happened? What did that guy say to you? And he's like, yeah, I don't know, he's got a costume and he was threatening. And I was like, no, I think he's actually not in a costume. He's a little crazy and like somebody might have to put him down. And he's like, that might be a good idea, I don't know. He said he was bleeding. And he was bleeding from his ear already and he had a four foot long piece of rebar as he was saying he was gonna kill people. So yeah, by the time I got done talking to that guy and like trying to assess the situation of what he was really doing, he was attacking uh, a woman in her own campsite, trying to stab her dog with the piece of rebar. He reeled back and hit her across the face. And you know, I luckily I did have my gun and you know, um, training in martial arts, but I didn't even wanna get close to this guy. He probably had a knife or a gun himself. There's no cops around to help out. I wanted to make sure I could make sure and neutralize this threat to society. And ran over there, got him on the ground and uh, took the rebar away from him. And I had to go get back to get something to tie him up and gave the rebar to somebody else, told them to take care of him, hold him down. But wasn't he choking? Was this? Yeah, he had had the rebar around the other lady's throat and was like trying to collapse her windpipes and like kill her. So at that point, you know, I let him know the gun was loaded and told him I would shoot him if he, if he didn't stop and lay down. He laid down, I took the rebar away, gave it to the other guy there, um, went back to go get something to restrain him and in that time he started fighting the other guy again and I went back over there and this time he just wouldn't back down and he just started walking towards me like he was gonna try to take my gun or something and asked, will you really shoot me? right before I shot him in the leg, non-lethal, and hog-tied him and left him there for the police to pick up when I went to the airport and called called the police and told them what happened and but checked you, his you, wounds you to make warned sure him he wasn't times. bleeding. I warned him like five times, 10 times, um, but he was insane out of his mind. So, you know, that's just one example of uh, things that can happen when you're far away from civilization. But you had to call and it in and the story doesn't really end there. No, it doesn't really. So yeah, I had to call it in. Um, they actually ended up like I was the suspect because I left the scene of a shooting. Um, but I was telling them like, I'm not gonna leave my family waiting at the airport. Like I've got to leave. And so I did call somebody else to try to get them before I got there. And, and they put out a bolo for me. Like I was the crazy criminal. And ironically, when I did call it in, I'm talking to the dispatcher and she's like, are you a marijuana grower out in Honeydew? And I was like, uh, I just told you there was a crazy person trying to kill two people 
and that I just subdued him and tied him up and left him there for you guys to go pick him up. And you're asking me if this is like a weed related, that was, it was really insulting. Um, yeah, pissed me off. But then they put a bolo out for me and it tried to like, <laughs> they were like looking for me like I was some criminal that running around shooting people. But once they found out the story, I got in there and uh, went to my lawyer's office and you know, brought, came in and they took interviews with everybody else before they wanted to talk to me. And by the time they talked to everybody else, they're like, no matter what you tell us tonight, you're walking out of here because we already know what happened and you saved those people's life. And I was like, cool. So then I told them the whole story and they're like, yeah, thank you for, for being there. And like, you're the type of citizen who should own a gun because you responsibly used it to save somebody's life. 